The Pittsburgh basketball team is off to another great start this season. The unbeaten Panthers are now 6-0, and they've moved up to third in the latest coaches poll. Tonight, Pitt faces another unbeaten Robert Morris from Pittsburgh. Big East basketball is next. And we welcome all of you inside tonight. We're at the Peterson Event Center on the campus of the University of Pittsburgh. The Colonials are 4-0, their best start ever. And the Panthers off to another good start. They are 6-0 as these two teams match up. It's a crosstown rivalry tonight in Pittsburgh. I'm John Sanders along with Mike Jarvis. And let's talk about the visitors. The Colonials of Robert Morris, and they're led by A.J. Jackson and Tony Lee. Jackson is off to a great start. Well, Jackson has missed a double-double, and uh, he's, he's just an incredible player. He's picked as the... Uh, uh, preseason uh, player of the year in the Northeast Conference, and uh, he's not letting anybody down. He gets 25 in the second half against Marshall. He comes up real big. And he's aided outside by Tony Lee, one of the returners. This is a pretty veteran team they've got. Well, it is. You got four guys back, and uh, Tony Lee, you're talking about an undersized three man. He's only six feet tall. I'm almost as tall as he is, but I'll tell you what, he gets six rebounds, he goes and gets those loose balls. The size, though, belongs to the Panthers of Pitt, and let's start with one of the best big men in the country, Aaron Gray. He might be the best big man in the country. You're talking about a guy that's an average double double guy, a guy that's going to probably be a lottery pick. He came back this year to go along. Long way in the NCAA tournament. Incredibly great guy, unselfish as they as they come. And he rebounds the basketball. He's got a great touch, and uh, he's just a fine player. And he's a veteran. He is a senior. They've got a fifth-year senior that plays alongside him. Of course, you look at the numbers. Last year, he averaged a double-double. He gets plenty of help from the young man from Canada, Levon Kendall. Well, Levon Kendall, if you talk to uh, Coach Dixon, he'll tell you he might be the most valuable player on the team. He might also be the most valuable person because this guy does all the dirty work. He does the little things that helps your team win and win championships. He's a winner. And they are the pick to win the Big East. We've got a battle of the Northeast Conference and the Big East Conference. We'll have the starting lineups from Pittsburgh coming up right after this. Tonight's Big East game is brought to you by Hyundai with quality that lets them offer America's best warranty, 10 years, 100,000 miles. And by Oppenheimer Funds, the right way to invest. Getting set for basketball tonight, the Peterson Event Center on the campus of the University of Pittsburgh. Both teams are undefeated. Mark Schmidt in his sixth year as the head coach at Robert Morris, and Mark knows he's got his jet work cut out for him tonight. He certainly does, and uh, talking to him before the game, uh, he's got uh, a lot of tricks in the bag, and we'll see how many he has to use. And Jamie Dixon has had four, now four very successful years, three teams to the NCAA, took over a good program, and it's just gotten stronger. Well, you know what? That's what great coaches do. They take over a good program, and they keep it right there. Uh, he has certainly done that. Let's take a look at the starting lineups for both teams tonight. And both teams, veteran teams, bringing back four of their five starters for this game this year. And that, of course, is a big plus. Has been for Pittsburgh over the years. They've always had a lot of veteran players around. Well, they really have. They get guys to come here and commit for four and five years. And here are the starting lineups for both teams. Coleman, Lee, Chappelle, Jackson, and Harris, the starters for Robert Morris. It's Fields, Cook, Graves, Kendall, and Gray. The newcomer there is Mike Cook, who maybe gives them a little dimension they didn't have before in that, that spot on the lineup. Well, what he is is he's a slasher, and uh, he can he can score. And, of course, uh, they don't have any problem getting guys in the scoring column. Glenn Mayborg is our referee. J.D. Collins, Collins and Bill Lobenstein are the umpires. We're underway here at the Peterson Event Center. 12,500. It's always sold out. Every game has been sold out since this building opened, and they rarely lose in this building. They are 69 and 6. Graves for three. That's a little short. Kendall cracks it down and keeps it alive. Gets it to Gray. Key tonight is going to be Robert Morris. Can they get the rebound on the misses? They must do that. Fields with a drive and a score. He had a big guy standing there clearing the way for him, didn't he? I mean, he went down the lane, there was nobody there. Well, I'll tell you what, they've got big guys, and those big guys take up a lot of room, and they also take up a lot of attention, especially Aaron Gray. And this lineup for Robert Morris, and there's a kickball, has Harris in there, and he's a guy that got hurt early last season. A junior college transfer, and a lot of times 
in these situations you have to build with junior college players? Well, you really do, uh, especially when you're trying to recruit against, let's say, the big boys that are in your own backyard. Now, the other school is Duquesne, a member of the Atlantic 10. As a matter of fact, the next game coming up for Robert Morris is at home against Duquesne, and then a week from tonight, the Duquesne will be here to play Pittsburgh. So. Well, those games obviously are huge for the for the underdog for the smaller school trying to make a name for themselves. Harris lost control momentarily. The shot clock is at seven. Let's take a look at our star watch tonight. And on the star watch you look at some guys maybe we weren't keying on at the start of this thing and we talked about Cook a little bit already. Well you know once again it's the it's the second tier guys that make the difference and in, in Chappelle and in Cook you got two guys that could make a huge difference scoring tonight. That one is blocked out of bounds by Kendall and a shot clock violation. It was the first shot attempt for A.J. Jackson. It was a three and this is something the Colonials have done a lot of shoot three pointers last year they had a record two hundred and thirty three pointers made a school record and they're going to have to make a lot of threes tonight and the other thing though that was good about that possession even though they got the shot blocked was the fact that they took time off the clock it can't score you've got it right amen gray backs his way down low puts it up bending out gets his own rebound momentarily it tipped away to coleman back comes Derek coleman now normally they like to shoot quick off of uh, misses or makes back door play the up and under spin move good by Tony Lee. Now Tony Lee was the guy we talked about. Tony Lee is only six foot tall but he actually plays the three position and creates tremendous mismatches for Robert Morris. First two minutes of the game even at two apiece. Panthers work the ball on the perimeter. Cook looks low no place to go and a foul called. Underneath the foul is going to go on Derek Coleman. A little bit of a tic tac foul but that's what happens when you're playing against an All-American. And that's why Coach Schmidt's probably asking the ref, what did you see? Well, you've got to try to use the body inside, even though you're outmanned size-wise. Out to Graves it comes. Fields has the Panther basket so far. Baseline jumper. Good. Aaron Graves first basket. And that's what Graves makes Gray so tough, is that he can step away from the basket and make those tough mid-range shots. The answer coming and the rimmer is no good and it goes into the hands of Graves. A shot by Coleman. They tried to come back quickly. This is Cook with some penetration and he draws a foul. It'll well, be a two shot foul. And as we said before Robert Morris is going to try to shoot quick. Of course if you shoot quick you got to make quick. Well it's imperative. They've played very well shooting and scoring at home where they've struggled is on the road. Well, part of that, of course, is, you know, once again, just being familiar with the surroundings. And this is quite different than most of the gyms that they're going to play in because this arena is 12,000 plus. They're used to playing in places that are a lot smaller than this. Their home gym is the Charles Sewell Center. And this is on the other side of Pittsburgh, out toward the airport in Moon Township, Pennsylvania. And, of course, Duquesne is just down the road. Those are the three primary city schools here in Pittsburgh. Panthers have their biggest lead three. It's going to be very important for Robert Morris to keep it close early. This afternoon, Coach Dixon worked a lot of time on preventing those little duck-in passes into the post. Be interested to see how they defend. That three-pointer is buried by Chappelle. Jeremy Chappelle, a sophomore out of Cincinnati, hits a three-pointer. That's his seventh of the year. Second tie in the early going. We played just over three minutes. Fields will run the offense. Got some pressure from Coleman. Fields with a little fade away, and he hits that one. He doesn't shoot a lot. He has kind of a interesting looking shot. Not a good looking shot, but the one thing about about him is Fields can make big shots. That's the thing I like about him. He'll hit the tough shots that have to be made. Jackson with the ball briefly. He has yet to score. The only shot he's attempted was blocked. Some inside passing, not a good idea. A little bit too much passing that time. He would have been better off taking the little mid range jump shot. And Cook makes a bad pass as he attempted to go to Antonio Graves. The other thing about this Pittsburgh team, they're pretty deep, uh, Mike. They will go about eight guys deep. You've got some pretty good athletes in 
Ramon, Young, and Biggs who aren't on the court. And even Keith Benjamin, uh, Coach Dixon will tell you he's got nine starters. I really think he's got eight, but he says <laughs> he's got nine starters. And that's, that's part of the psychology of keeping everybody happy, which is very difficult to do today. Another three-pointer is on its way, bending off and into the hands of Kendall on the rebound. So a miss by Chappelle. Back comes Pitt. Graves on a drive, no place to go. He's tied up on the baseline. Fields will shoot a three and comes up short. Chappelle starts back. Fields goes for the steal, but he maintains control. Scoop shot, no good. Rebound Kendall. Oh, Kendall has got the good size. He's not real big around. He's 6'10". He's 6'10", and uh, he's, like once again, he's one of those guys that does all the little things. Remember the Canadian national team. Graves saves it, but he throws it all the way down to the other end and sets up a nice basket for Lee, his second field goal, and we're tied again. Notice how Lee used his body, and uh, he's, uh, he's a very deceptive player, a real strong player who's going to basically not be afraid of these guys. These guys play against each other all summer long in the, I believe, the West Allegheny in, in, uh, in the summer league. Well, most of the pit players stayed here and played together all summer long. So they're familiar with some of these guys. Here's Cook down the lane, has it stripped, but into the hands of Aaron Gray for his second field goal. The thing about Gray is if you double team and he's having an off night, they've mm -hmm. got some other weapons that they can go to. Well, I was talking with Coach Enfield of, uh, of Florida State, the assistant coach, and he said the problem is you spend so much attention on Aaron Gray that it makes everybody else that much better and opens up the game for all the other players. Right now the Panthers do have the early edge inside, points in the paint. And they're using a lot of the shot clock on this possession. Coleman. And a traveling violation is called. If he Iram in the lineup and he turns it over, the third turnover, the early lead belongs to Pitt. If you want to make Colonial staying in this ball game early, and so far they've done a good job of it. Well, they really have, uh, and it's going to be once again, it's a it's a psyche thing. If they, the longer they can hang in there, the more they're going to believe that they can win the basketball game. But Pitt has never lost to Robert Morris. As a matter of fact, only once did the Colonials come within 10 points or less of Pitt. 25 and 0 the record. Of course, the Panthers against the Northeast Conference are 63 and 0. So there is an intimidation factor, that's for sure. Well, there certainly is. This is Biggs with it outside. He's on the court along with Benjamin. And Benjamin will shoot the jumper. Drills it. Keep Benjamin off the bench with a basket. Right now, this pit team for Robert Morris might be a little more dangerous than the team that started because you've got another couple of shooters in the game in Ramon and Benjamin. That's going to be a foul on Ronald Ramon, who comes off the bench. At times, they will have both Levance Fields and Ramon on the court at the same time. But they can both play the point if need be. Well, they can, and they got to, you know, once again, both those guys played a lot of point in high school back in New York City. And the Panthers just put in four new players. Aaron Gray is the only starter still out there. But that's what you talk about the depth of the team. Oh, unbelievable. That's a three. And it's no good. And the rebound brought down by Pittsburgh. Here's Ramon to bring it back. Now it's going to be important for A.J. Jackson, number 32, to get off early tonight. He's usually much better in the second half, but you don't want to be behind against Pitt. Here he comes with the basketball, and that is Tony Lee. On the perimeter, Chappelle, who has a three-pointer tonight, the only one of the game for either team. Here's a six-foot guy posting you up, even though it's in the high post. Makes a very difficult matchup for anybody playing against him. Controlling the basketball is Derek Coleman. Shot clock is inside 10. Jackson down the lane, no place to go. He throws it away. Ramon a steal and then the foul. The foul is going to go on number 21, Jeremy Chappelle. One way that the Panthers, I think, Mike, over the years really have built their team, they build it on defense a lot of it. Well, they have, and uh, they're a very, I mean, they're a great defensive team. And, uh, you know, they, they play more zone principles than they do man-to-man -man principles. Uh, they're not a team that's trying to steal the ball. You know, in this case here, that was just a real smart read on Ramon's part. And then the quick reach-in foul. Now Ramon running the offense from the point. 
This is Benjamin, looks inside, no place to go. Young is there. Ramon for three from straight away, and he buries it. Ronald Ramon, he can shoot the threes. He's 15 of 22 this year for right. shooting three points. I'll tell you what, I was just going to say, he's as good a three point shooter as there is in the country. And good penetration inside that time. The answer comes from Chappelle, gets his second field goal. He's got five points. Panther lead is five right now. It's been as many as seven. We played almost eight minutes of this opening half. And Robert Morris is going to have to keep trying to use that dribble drive to make things happen if they're going to be successful. And the first step travel is called on Sam Young. You saw that Levon Kendall came back in to replace Aaron Gray, so he'll play the five at times, which is what he's going to have to do right now. Which is what he used to do a lot in high school and uh, very comfortable at that position. And uh, in fact, he creates a, a quite a different look when he is at the five. Both teams all so far have played all man to man. Look for Robert Morris to play a little bit of zone tonight. And there they were looking for that duck in, trying to get the ball inside the post. And Pitt defended that today quite a bit. There it is right there. And finally they get it down low to Jackson. He gets loose for his first basket. Cuts the lead back to three. It had been on a 7-0 run with the last two baskets scored by the Colonials. Here's Benjamin skating in, puts up the little floater, and hits it. That's a tough shot from that distance. That is a very difficult shot, especially when you don't use the backboard from that 45-degree angle. And, of course, they did that against a little 2-2-1 pressure by Robert Morris, which was actually a good move on their part. This is Lee with it outside. Backs away as Young comes out on him. A trim down Sam Young has lost a little bit of weight so it's big they're Biggs, both smaller yes Biggs has lost 30 pounds talking to Jamie today he says you know he'd rather have his players be quick than bulky shot clock again a factor the three pointers too strong and rebound one handed down by Young Colson Sanat took that last shot a quick turnaround by Kendall bending in Got the roll that time, hit the iron and came back. Dangerous point. I know it's early in the game, but this is right now. You got seven, another three-pointer by Pitt. It's a ten-point game. It's going to be very important for Robert Morris to stop the bleeding right here. And the closest game the Panthers have had this year was in the tournament they hosted, and they beat Oakland, but that was their closest game. However, they had played five games in eight days. Here's Jackson, and Kendall gets ball and man and picks up the foul. Levon was not going to let that one go unchallenged. No, he wasn't. And uh, actually, uh, A.J. would have been better off laying that one off the backboard. I mean, you know, he, he gave them a chance of blocking that shot. Right now, Pitt has matched its biggest lead of the first half. A 10-14 play. It's the Panthers by seven. We'll shoot some free throws when we come back. Panthers have the lead. It's 18-11 to 11 as we come back. And this is a steal, and we go the other way. Let's see now, and this one here, it looks like a pretty clean block. There was a, you know, it was a very loud block. I think that's why the foul was called. But what I noticed after that was just the way that Jamie Dixon handled himself, almost like smiling at the referees, you know, not getting them upset, but certainly sending a message. So Kendall picks up his first foul, and Jackson, and Jackson, a preseason all Northeast Conference players. As a matter of fact, the Colonials were picked second in the coaches preseason poll behind Monmouth. But that's uh, <laughs> since the coaches have been wrong 17 of the last 19 years. That's OK, I guess. That's huh? a blessing. I mean, if the coaches had picked them first, they wouldn't win it. <laughs> this way, I think they got a real good shot. He hits a pair. And he's now 21 out of 23 at the free throw line. So this redshirt senior who transferred from East Tennessee State had a good year last year, but he has really lightened up so far this year. Little 2-2-1 two, two, again. And a nice steal. steal. Young got it back. Well, you now know. Ramon. On the wing, it's Kendall. He's going to stop and pop. That's too strong. Rebound ripped out of there by Sanat. This is Derek Coleman. Well, he handles the ball a lot, doesn't he? No wonder he has so many assists. Yes, he does. A little pull up, too strong. Kept alive that time by Sonat again. A good offensive rebound and a new clock for the Robert Morris Colonials who trail right now by five. 
you know when you're smaller than your opponent you got to be quicker than them and you got to get those rebounds that will not count it's an offensive foul on Mezzi the weak way the weak way in the lineup he is from Hyattsville Maryland I didn't Biggs yeah, was stink standing yeah. his ground there I didn't think he got there but he did it was a good call I hate to say that sometimes <laughs> Jeez. it's the toughest part of sitting here isn't oh it? baby here's fields from outside that's a three and it's no good Kendall has the rebound goes back up with it misses but he'll go to the line well you want Fields shooting it but then at the same time you've got to get a body on everybody you can't let any of these guys get to the you know get to the offensive boards especially the center and the power forward it'll be Kendall at the line He's 17 of 21 shooting free throws he's been part of the Canadian national team he's a multifaceted guy who loves music and he kind of travels to the beat of a different drummer <laughs> but I heard it's a pretty good beat. <laughs> it's a good beat yeah <laughs> it's just not the kind you normally hear <laughs> He's a 50 year senior. The Panthers have done a lot of that. They've had red shirt players, guys who've been around for you know, five years. And I think that's what makes them special, to be very honest with you. They got older, mature players who are committed to the total, total experience. A little runner that time by Chappelle, and he's got seven points. He's the leading scorer on the court right now. And again, we're seeing the pressure from yes, the are. Colonial. A little soft, but once again, this will slow. This will take some time off the clock. This is Cook with it. Fine steals. They have not gone inside the gray that much so far. No, they have not. Cook with the left hand. That's a nice move. And that's one of the things that maybe they didn't have from the guy in the number three spot before was the ability to slash and penetrate, and he can do that. He certainly can. And uh, when he's in the game, especially with like Ramon or Graves, you got guys, those other guys can shoot the ball, so a slasher like him becomes even that much more dangerous. Once again, it's Coleman working on field. There's the kick out, and there's an offensive foul. So wipe out that basket. And the offensive foul charged as Coleman could not pull up. He picks up his second foul. 21-15 is the score here. Six different pit players have scored so far. It's Temple out in front of Rutgers by 15. That game is at the halftime. The Scarlet Knights struggling to get going this year. Notre Dame so far has doubled it up on Winston Salem. Here comes Cook again. Spins, gets it in the air, hangs, and draws the foul. Well, what the pressure is doing in, in terms of Robert Morris's favor is it's speeding Pittsburgh up a little bit. Maybe that's why the ball isn't going inside to Graves. And they're basically taking quicker shots than I think they want to. And Cook at the line drills his first chance. He's two of three so far tonight. Four points. A transfer from East Carolina. Sat out last year, so he's a redshirt junior out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Barry Rorson is no longer here. And he was the pipeline for a lot of these players from the Bronx, Brooklyn. Yes. I don't know what he said to the guys in New York, but whatever he said, they liked it. Because <laughs> if you notice, there's five guys that are coming in next year, and not one of them are from New York. Nice kick out again. Got to make those three. Three pointer, and it's a good look and a straight on shot and a basket. If there's a weakness against the pit, of the defense, it is penetrate, kick. Of course, you got to make the threes. That's the first field goal of the season for Jeremy Langhurst, a freshman from Willard, Ohio. Aaron Gray tumbles as he goes down inside and draws the foul. Well, Coach Schmidt is complaining, of course. It's going to be number two on Jackson. Pittsburgh with a lead, but the Colonials hanging in. The difference right now is just four. Enjoying Guinness Draft in a sports bar is a great idea. Yes, this is much better than the last bar. This is much better than the last bar. Much better? Brilliant! Brilliant! Please enjoy Guinness Draft responsibly.
Utility Select Sector Spider. Visit us on the web at sectorspdrs.com or call 1-800-THE-MX now. Do you love spending hours working out at the gym? If you do, the Total Gym is not for you. But if you want one of the fastest, most effective workouts ever, then the Total Gym is for you. For our 10th anniversary, we have an incredible deal. You can try the Total Gym in your home for an entire month, risk-free. We'll ship you a Total Gym at our expense. If you don't see a remarkable change, just send it back, and we'll return every penny you were charged. But if you're like most of us, once you try it, you'll never want to be without it again. Just one year on the Total Gym and I've lost 45 pounds. So take our risk-free challenge and get the body you've always wanted. Why go to the gym when you can own one? Call the number on your screen for our anniversary special. Try the Total Gym in your home risk-free for 60 days. We'll pay shipping and handling. Call now. And we're back. It's 22 to 18. I can understand some of the unhappiness of Coach Schmidt because there's a huge disparity in the foul situation in this game. Well, there is. It's 8 to 2, and uh, Pittsburgh's usually the team that's beating you up a little bit. And, you know, Coach Schmidt is uh, griping. But you know what? When, you, when your conference is 0-63, it's awful tough. And there are the Hyundai Big East leaders you got to look at. Aaron Gray misses. They're already in the bonus are the Panthers, and we still have... 720 remaining in this half. And the blocking foul call. No, oh, it's eight to three now. <laughs> That's right. Mike Cook picks up his first personal foul. Just the third team foul on the Panthers. And the inbound play will be handled by Langhurst, who got his first field goal of the season. A three-pointer. Almost stolen, but kept alive that time by Chappelle. Baseline move, but the block and going up again, but a miss. And Aaron Gray comes back with it. Here's Fields for Pitt. Call pass for A.J. Jackson. He's been doing most of the scoring this year for Robert Morris, but he's also got a guard. Gray, that's a three, and it's too strong. Well, I'll tell you what it was also was the extra pass. That's what's making Pitt such a dangerous team. Even though they didn't make that, they made the extra pass. Colonials have the ball. This is Sanat. Jackson bending. No good. Rebound to Kendall. He's been good on the board so far. Levon Kendall. Jackson's got to make those if Robert Morris is going to have a shot here tonight. This is Fields. Looks to Cook. Kendall's fadeaway. No good. Rebound by Nwigwe. As Nwigwe brings it back. And once again, a guy that hasn't played much so far this year. Langhurst is getting a lot of playing time. That's because Coleman is in foul trouble. Here's that duck in. And the foul's going to go on Graves. You know, what? When I, when I used to watch Coach Schmidt play for Tom Davis at Boston College, Tom Davis perfected what we used to call was the bolo pass. It was like, it was almost like you were bowling and the ball would get into the post time after time. And Robert Morris spends a lot of time on that little pass that comes usually from below the knees into the post play. From outside, the three-pointer is going to be short. Fields takes the rebound away from Kendall. Rebounding edge, as you saw, so far to Colonia. This is Kendall off the nice speed by Fields. Very nice pass. Very unselfish player. Does not care whether he scores or not, just as long as Pitt wins. But he will take the big shot if needed. Yes, he will. This is Lee. Sets it up now to Sanat. That's when your point guard has three early fouls, it's going to make a change in what you do offensively. Well, it really does, especially when he's such a tough player. Now, Robert Morris has not scored in the last two and a half minutes, and for the Panthers, they haven't scored in the last two minutes as well. So it's been a struggle for both teams to put the ball in the basket. Here's the foul. And you know what I think that is? I think it's good defense. Both these teams very much like each other in the sense that they play real good, solid, half-court, helping defense. 
fouls on Ronald Ramon. He has two. The only Panther in any kind of foul trouble. Jackson draws some pressure from the field. He's got the big man on the little man. Push off. And that's what it's called. It's going to go on Tony Lee. It'll be his first. I think there was a push off when the guy fell down like that. Huh? Well, you know what? I mean, <laughs> honestly, I mean, that was such an easy call because, you you know, the hands were down uh, by the guy's waist, and uh, it was a very easy call. And, of course, the Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh guy helped a little bit as well by making sure that he moved forward. So Cook to the line. He's done most of the foul shooting so far. This will be his fifth attempt, and it is a one and one there in the bonus with just over five minutes to go. And one more foul, and they'll be shooting two for the rest of the half. Another critical time in the game for Robert Morris. This way you got to stay. You got to. You got to be under ten going in at halftime. Got to be. Well, last year it was a pit victory, 86 to 59. Carl Krauser led that parade with 27 points. Carl played here for about what 18 years, you think? <laughs> Jackson from outside. And there's the strength of Gray to go up and handle that rebound. Ramon Cook glides in and scores and is fouled. The basket goes. I mean, I question, honestly, I question that call only because the same call at the other end or the, the same play at the other end was, you know, was, was called just the opposite way. But that's what happens when you're number two in the country and you're playing at home. That is correct. And now that lead is in that danger area you talked about, a chance to stretch it to 11. Cook at the line. And it rattles out. The rebound, though, comes loose, and Biggs winds up with it. So the Panthers get a fresh clock with 440 to play in the half. Fields. Field Gray is getting so deep. And when he gets deep and catches it, you're in trouble. Ramon misses the three. Gray over the back for his first foul. Aaron Gray will pick up the call. And that's what they call a makeup call. <laughs> there was definitely nothing on that one. So for Robert Morris, here's part of the problem. Four players have scored. Six players have committed fouls. So they've gotten themselves in some early foul trouble with their floor general on the bench with three most of this half. The first on Gray. Panthers leading by 10. And that's what we spoke about earlier. That depth factor, I mean, makes a huge difference. Nine players times five is 45 fouls. Six players, that's only 30. You're at a big disadvantage. This is Chappelle. He's been very good for Robert Morris here in the first half. Yes, he has. Now, you've got four guys on this Robert Morris team to average over 30 minutes a game. That one comes up short. Ramon sneaks in, got a piece of it. Fields will push it ahead. This is Benjamin, pulls up for the jumper and nails it. The junior from Mount Vernon, New York, makes it a 12-point lead. And they don't push it a lot, the Panthers, but they can if they need to. They can if they need to. They know when to push it, and they know which guys you know, have done the green light to take that quick shot. Benjamin's one of those guys. He's a scorer. And these guys really have settled into their roles nicely. They're a very unselfish group of kids. Well, they are. You know, you said you used the word role. They know what they can do. And they don't try to take, you know, they don't try to be somebody else. They play within themselves. That's what makes this team special. Plus, they really like each other. This team has got great chemistry. And are they a better team, even though they don't have a guy like Carl Krause? I think they're better because of that. I think that what it makes them do is it makes them even more of a team. Krause was great, but he had to have the ball. And he wanted to take the big shot at the end of the game. Of course, he made a lot of them, too. That's, that's true, he did. At 27 against Robert Morris last year. Three-pointer on the way. Good. Well, the bottom of the basket for Chappelle. That's his second three. And he's already in double figures with ten. And you know what? He's got to be because Jackson has been a little bit, you know, cool. But he usually is in the first half for some reason. I don't know what it is. There's the trap. But they handle that. Fields gets it to Ramon. Baseline shot up good. Almost a standstill shot for Aaron Gray. Didn't get much elevation, but he made it. Don't have to. And I tell you what, when a big guy can step away 10, 12 feet, Seven footer and make those shots. He's going to make a lot of money for a lot of years in the NBA. <laughs> well, he thought about it. 
and then changed his mind and came back. He was committed to coming back to this team and making them better. Well, he certainly made the right choice. Forced that shot, and it'll be Panther basketball. 2.54 to play. A couple of subs. Sanat comes in for the second time. Young returns as well. Pittsburgh in front. It only happens once a year. The Hyundai Challenge year-end sales event. Up to two grand cash back. Your best opportunity to save more than ever on more models than ever. All with America's best warranty. Like the fuel-efficient Tucson. Ranked highest in initial quality by J.D. Power & Associates. Take the Hyundai Challenge. Take up to $2,000 cash back. But don't take your time. Offer ends November 30th. Lease a new Hyundai Tucson for just $2.29 a month at your local Hyundai dealer. Experience is an excellent teacher. And what over 45 years of experience has taught Oppenheimer Funds is the strength of a balanced approach and the effectiveness of a diversely skilled team. Valuable lessons that guide us through an ever-changing financial landscape. Oppenheimer Funds, the right way to invest. Carefully consider fund investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses. Call your advisor for a prospectus with this and other fund information. Read it carefully before investing. I've been putting off dealing with the IRS, and now they've levied 90% of my wages. And froze my bank account. We tried dealing with the IRS ourselves. Big mistake. Our business has payroll tax problems. Now the IRS is threatening to take our home. We don't want to file bankruptcy. I hired a company who promised a fast pennies on the dollar compromise. And they did nothing, right? The IRS is ruining our marriage. Isn't there a company out there we can trust? Yes, there is. Nationwide Tax Relief. If you or someone you care about is suffering with tax problems, call the attorneys at Nationwide for a free confidential consultation. Nationwide got the IRS to reduce my $134,000 tax debt to $1,500. I'm so grateful. If you owe the IRS more than $10,000, call us. We're honest and we'll treat you like family. I only wish I'd called Nationwide years ago. Call 1-800-455-2992 for your free confidential consultation. Call 1-800-455-2992 now. This is Pitt Basketball here at the Peterson Event Center. An outstanding facility, and boy, they play well in this plate. They're 69-6 and six against non-conference teams. They've lost only one game in this building. They're 42 and one. Well, I'll tell you what, they have done a great job not only building this building, but creating a tremendous atmosphere, especially where they put the students down low, where the students have basically a real good shot at getting the attention of the visiting team. And the blocking foul call. It'll go on Robert Morris. It'll be the first on Colson Sanat. Of course, uh, Fitzgerald Fieldhouse was no piece of cake place to play, was it? <laughs> Trust me, not a very easy place to play at all. Uh, Coach Schmidt, since coming to Robert Morris, has preached defense. As a matter of fact, his teams are 52 and 17 when they hold the opponent under 70 points. Well, you know what? Most teams would be very successful if they played defense. That's the foul trouble. One player with three, two others have two. Graves gets one of two. He gets his name in the scorebook. So it's still another Panther. Puts points on the board, and they open it up now to their biggest lead, a 12-point edge. Second time they've been up by 12. This is Jackson working on Biggs. Gets down low, misses the shot. The putback is good by Lee. But at least that time, Jackson was very aggressive going to the basket. And he's got to, you know, he's just got to take over this game for Robert Morris if they're going to have a chance. Well, that's certainly what he did in the second half of the game at Maine. They won two home games, two road games. Here's this that extra is a, pass again. And it rattles out. The three didn't go. Jackson with the rebound. Gets it ahead to Langhurst. Now is the time to be patient. You're down 10. You get a couple of baskets. Make it a six-game point game or maybe a five-point game. Less than two to play. Jackson's turnaround off the glass and good. Six points for him. You know, you talked about uh, role players, and right now Robert Morris has got to realize that on the court, they've got to get the ball to one of three players. They've either got to get it to Jackson, they've got to get it to Chappelle, or they've got to get it to Lee. Those are basically the only three guys that should be shooting the ball. Well, Jackson with a nice touch off the glass. 
gets a little separation and puts up that quick jumper using the glass. Amen. I wish, you know what, I wish more players would use the glass. Anytime you're at that 45-degree angle, that's to your advantage. So Jackson now with six points. And they cut the lead down to eight. They've been down by as many as 12. Chappelle has 10, Lee has six, Jackson has six. So those guys, as you pointed out, they've done most of the scoring here in this half. And they've got to do it. And Jackson right now has got to play this last minute and 45 seconds like it's the second half when he's at his best. Okay. Cook handles for Pittsburgh. Just over a minute and a half left. This is Ramon. He's come off the bench to hit a three-pointer tonight. Now Benjamin looks for help. Go inside to Gray. Gray draws a double team. Kicks it back to Ramon. Now low again. Gray's turnaround hook good. When he's that deep, I mean, there's a reason why the big guy is shooting about 70% from the field. In fact, 67% because he gets great position and he's got a great touch. Lead back to 10 once again. Is that curl? But no place to go underneath. Straight away three-pointer is too strong. And Aaron Gray has the rebound. Gets it to Benjamin. Final minute of the half. Benjamin steps down the lane. Lays it up. Bending off. No good. Tipped out of bounds. And it will belong to the Panthers. So Pitt will keep it. Well, one thing about the you know players, they watch these games. And I hope Mr. Sanat watches this game. And one of the reasons why he may have missed so many three-pointers in this game is when he was warming up before the game, he was shooting from about 35 feet instead of from 22 feet. We have halftime activity as Ramon launches his three. He comes up short and the rebound to Sanat. And a foul call. That's going to go on Cook. Well, that does two things. It gives... Uh, uh, Robert Morris a chance to cut it under 10. It also gives him a chance to rest a little bit because you can bet that uh, Pittsburgh is going to probably come back down and pound it into gray. If he Iram will check back in and Jackson will go to the bench for the final 43.8 of the half as we walk to the free throw line. Just the third free throw opportunity for Robert Morris. Colonial is trying to go to 5 and 0 and they're already at 4 and 0 history of this school their best start ever this is a school that went from junior college to division one in one year an amazing jump that is incredible I mean I've, I in fact I, I never heard of a school doing that <laughs> they're the only ones that did it that's why I guess I never heard of it <laughs> so that gets his first point of the night and he gets two and I'm sure if Robin Morris gets the ball back uh, you look for Jackson possibly to come back in to finish off the half. Some pressure, Fields handles. Good job making the big guy come back to handle the ball. I'm sure they're going inside this time to Gray. 30 seconds to go in the half. They look to Gray, they get it to Gray. He skips it across. Fields passes on the shot. Rightfully so. And then from deep in the corner, that one is bending off from the rebound by Lee. So one more chance here in the final seconds for the Colonials. They've cut it to eight. Maybe look for six them. or five. Look for them to get it to Chappelle possibly for the last shot. Nope. Yeah. Three pointer. It is good. Maybe that's why he was practicing those 30 foot jump shots. Sanat hits the three pointer, and just like that, it is a five point game as the Colonials have a little momentum going to halftime. We'll have our halftime activities from the Peterson Event Center where the Panthers looking for win number seven in a row lead it by five. Stay with us. We'll check out the top 25 let you know what's going on around the Big East when we come back. Broadcasting sports for a long time. Much of what I do is ad libbed but still one of the most important aspects of my job is being able to write narrations essays commentaries it's essential to express those thoughts and concepts clearly and concisely. Good writing is essential for almost any career. And with today's advanced technology, the National Commission on Writing reports that the need to write well has never been more important. Writing is everybody's business. Kotlin Gardner is a real Geico customer, not an actor. So to help tell her story, we hired an actor. My husband totaled our new SUV on my birthday. But you know, I still love him. Less than six hours after the accident, the Geico claim adjuster was at my house. 
Well, I put on some tangerine lip gloss and answered the door. Geico service turned out to be the best birthday present I could ever want. I was one lucky woman. <laughs> Geico. Real service, real savings. Does the high cost of health care have you worried? Do you find you can't afford health insurance? Are you underinsured? Well, here's the solution, Synergy Health. For less than $2 a day, your entire family can save thousands of dollars on all your medical expenses. With more than 600,000 providers around the country, this program can save you up to 60% on doctors, hospitals, hearing, vision, prescriptions, and even dental. Plus, you'll get great savings on chiropractic, alternative medicine, and more. Now my whole family gets regular checkups, and Synergy Health even books our appointments for all of us. If you don't have health insurance, or you don't have enough, Synergy Health is for you. I have a heart condition. But with Synergy Health, everyone's approved. You'll feel better with Synergy Health. With Synergy Health, I saved $1,000 at my dentist. This program includes your entire family for less than $2 a day. Call 1-800-213-5022. Call now. These are our seats right here. Yes? Oh! This is awesome! Oh! Come on, come on, let's do it now! Awesome! Yes, sir! Oh! Everybody's going to get here! Hey, we're all hanging out tonight. If you could sit oh, yeah. here for the same price as here. Peanuts! Why wouldn't you? Oh! It's the same with auto insurance. With discounts up to 40%, it's possible to get the personal service of a State Farm agent for the same or less than those other guys. Call an agent 24-7 or visit statefarm.com. Welcome back once again to the Peterson Center. We're on the campus of the University of Pittsburgh. We played the first 20 minutes of tonight's matchup between Robert Morris and the University of Pittsburgh. And we begin our halftime by checking out the Big East standings. And right now, Mike, there are five Big East teams that don't have a loss. They do not. Uh, great uh, teams and great scheduling. You look at the rest of the standings, I think I'm a little surprised by West Virginia. Everybody thought they'd be down, but they played well in that tournament in Orlando over the weekend. And there is the rest of the pack, Rutgers and DePaul at the bottom, struggling a little bit. Here's our player of the week, Jarrell McNeil from Marquette. Super quick. I saw him play last week uh, against Duke. A great player, great up. And the rookie of the week comes from Cincinnati. Deonta Vaughn is the rookie of the week. Well, Cincinnati is obviously rebuilding, and uh, they're going to, uh, this young man's a big part of their future. Checking out the top 25, you can see there are two Big East teams in the top 10. Uh, Mike, one of them, of course, Pittsburgh, we're watching tonight. Marquette's gotten off to a good start. Well, Marquette has, and uh, of course, this Pitt team that we're going to see tonight uh, could just as easily be ranked number one in the country. They're that good. And ranked teams, there are five altogether from the Big East. Pitt, Marquette, Syracuse, UConn, and Georgetown. All of those teams are in the top 25. But the tests are going to get a little bit tougher coming this weekend. Well, they will. And it starts with Georgetown at Duke. And, of course, uh, last year, Georgetown uh, beat Duke at home. And uh, Cameron Crazies will be waiting anxiously. And Kansas against DePaul, that'll certainly be a test for DePaul. Pitt will take its show on the road. Well, anytime you go on the road, it's always more difficult. We'll have more. We'll check out some Big East scores, top 25 scores, when we come back with more Big East basketball after this. Energy Select Sector Spider. Visit us on the web at sectorspdrs.com or call 1 800 the Amex now. I wanted to build my future. At the University of Pittsburgh, I learned with the best students. Pitt students win top national and international scholarships. And Pitt's alumni, they receive the world's top prizes. Pitt's athletes are among the best ever. And Pitt's ranked in the top 20 national public universities. At school, people build their future. At Pitt, we're building our future together. Three elbow in. The best coach I ever had was my dad. Practice. 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 He taught me that the fundamentals, together with hard work, make anything possible. And now it's time to teach others what my dad taught me. Introducing Steve Nash's MVP Basketball, the only DVD program that makes back-to-back -back MVP Steve Nash your personal coach. You'll learn Steve's fundamental training secrets to give you a competitive edge on the court. 
I don't think there's anybody in the NBA that does it any better than Steve Nash. What an opportunity to have Steve Nash as your child's personal coach. This program is about the fundamentals of basketball, and Steve Nash knows the fundamentals of basketball. Order two-time MVP Steve Nash's MVP basketball program for the low introductory price of only $29.95. Act now and you'll receive a second DVD, Steve's Team Play and Practice Organization. Perfect for the parent coach, absolutely free. But it's not available in stores, so you must act now. It's a weekend three-pointer of College Hoops on Sportsnet New York. Saturday night, Indiana welcomes UNC Charlotte to Bloomington. Then on Sunday, the Michigan State Spartans host Bradley in East Lansing. And the final shot of the weekend is in South Bend, as DJ Strawberry leads Maryland against the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. It's a weekend of college basketball on SNY, tipping off with UNC Charlotte versus Indiana Saturday at 8. Then on Sunday, Bradley, Michigan State at noon, and Maryland, Notre Dame at 6.30 on Sportsnet New York. A 12-5 Panther run in the last four minutes, or excuse me, Colonial run in the last four minutes of the opening half reduced the 12-point lead to five at halftime. That is the score as the teams are back in their locker rooms. Let's check out some other action. First of all, in the Big East, Temple is beating up on Rutgers. Notre Dame leads by 11 over Winston-Salem. That game is at the half. Cincinnati and Oakland just getting underway. The Bearcats in a rebuilding situation are four and one on the season. UConn is having its way with Sacred Heart at halftime. Georgetown ranked number 23 leading by two over Oregon. LSU number 12 leads McNeese State. That game is in the first half. Memphis a one point lead in the first half over Arkansas State. Nevada over Louisiana Lafayette. That game's in the first half. Wolfpack has not lost. Butler has the lead over Valpo. UMKC by a point over Wichita State. That is early in that ball game. Ohio State, the top-ranked team in both football and basketball, will play at 9 o'clock. And later on tonight, number 11, Washington, will be playing Idaho. We'll take a look at some of our highlights and stats from the opening 20 minutes of play when we come back to the peak after this. Six players do not make a team. If they don't work together, they're just six individuals in matching uniforms. At Oppenheimer Funds, our investment professionals work hand in hand, sharing more than a common goal, sharing the skills that can lead to success. Oppenheimer Funds, the right way to invest. Carefully consider fund investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses. Call your advisor for a prospectus with this and other fund information. Read it carefully before investing. Swings it out, Anderson, down low, boom, dunks, what a pass. McGee brings a double team and steals it for Thomas. The Dean, a three, good. Out to Krauser, three-pointer is good. It's showtime at the peak. Right in the lane, back to McNamara, three on the way, right side, book it. Mandy Foy, down the lane, pulls up off the glass, and good from eight feet right in the lane. Yeah, they can't stop it. Here's J.D. driving, kicking it right corner, Herbert for a three, yeah. yes! America runs on Duncan's Pound of Coffee. Available in five delicious flavors like French vanilla and hazelnut, they're the perfect way to turn a holiday get-together into a celebration. America runs on Duncan. Ah, yes. It's that time of year again. A time to spread goodwill and cheer among your fellow man. But this holiday season, take a break from the usual mirth and merriment with the New York Lottery Holiday Instant Games, Peppermint Twist, Polar Pairs, and Surprise Package, which could be worth up to $750,000. Hey, you never know. Sharper details. Stunning clarity more vibrant colors. Discover what your camera's megapixels are really capable of. Wow. Upgrade to an ultra high definition photo printer. Only from Epson. America runs on Dunkin' Lattes. No complicated ordering procedures, just the rich, delicious taste of espresso and steamed milk. They're the lattes for the rest of us. America runs on Duncan. 
It is pit by five at halftime as we welcome you back to Pittsburgh. And our Big East coaches spotlight is brought to you by Oppenheimer Funds. Let's take a closer look at Coach Jamie Dixon and all he's done since taking over for Ben Howland is win. Huh? Well, you know what? He learned from a great coach. Uh, he was his mentor. And uh, guess what? When something works, don't mess with it. <laughs> well, isn't it interesting that they're both very highly ranked right now. We welcome you back to Pittsburgh. I'm John Sanders along with Mike Jarvis and as you would expect as we look at some of the highlights Pitt did a lot of its damage with the big man and a lot of work inside. Well they did and uh, once again the name of the game is to go inside and of course when the big guy can also step away 10 to 12 feet and then on defense he makes such a big difference never has to leave his feet just gets those hands up when he gets this close it's the reason why he's shooting 67 almost 70 percent and then of course the other way to score is with penetration and pull ups and Benjamin is great at that and Pittsburgh this year you'll see them push it up take advantage and if it's the right guy at the right time he'll score and that time was Benjamin. You know, he had six but the answer came especially in the late minutes for some good perimeter shooting well, for the Colonial. Well it did and Chappelle has a quick release as quick as you're going to see and uh, he lit it up pretty good. Uh, also, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, 21, uh, you, know, you know, once again, Chappelle is, is really scoring. Colson's uh, hit at the end with a big three, and they cut it down under 10. It's a five-point game, so now it's anybody's ball game. Now the Colonials have come back on the court. The Panthers have not returned. Let's check it out statistically and see what happened in the opening 20 minutes of play as you look at some of the numbers from the first half of action. Uh, we expected some good shooting. And Pitt has not disappointed. They're shooting 50 percent, 39 percent for Robert Morris. And they have the advantage in turnovers. Just a very slim margin in uh, rebounds, though. One rebound difference. And the other thing is the assist to turnover ratio for both teams. As Pitt's got a plus three, Robert Morris is even. Right now it's 35 30. Both teams are back on the court. We'll begin the second half when we come back. I'm a Mecca Okafor, college graduate, Charlotte Bobcat, and proud recipient of the Aeropostale Big E Scholar Athlete of the Year. Graduating with a 3.76 GPA and a degree in finance in three years, I balance books and basketball. Aeropostale gives out more than $300,000 in scholarships to both students and student athletes. It wasn't and still isn't all about the rebounds. I'm Bob Costas, and I've been broadcasting sports for a long time. Much of what I do is ad-libbed, but still, one of the most important aspects of my job is being able to write. Narrations, essays, commentaries, it's essential to express those thoughts and concepts clearly and concisely. Good writing is essential for almost any career, and with today's advanced technology, the National Commission on Writing reports that the need to write well has never been more important. Writing is everybody's business. Why does that bother you? Why does it bother me? So easy a caveman can do it? Well, it's just a commercial. Okay. Well, what if it said, um, Geico.com, so easy a therapist can do it? Well, that commercial wouldn't make sense to me. Why not? Well, therapists are... Are what? Smart? My mother's calling. I'll put it on speaker. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Maybe you know of our thermal springs. Maybe you know our beautiful fall colors. Our fantastic festivals. Well, there's even more to discover in Arkansas, home of the indoor-outdoor vacation. And there's no better time to discover Arkansas, the natural state, than this fall. Call for a free vacation planning kit. When paying all your bills on time becomes difficult, don't wait until your credit score goes down and interest rates go up. As a homeowner, you should act quickly to protect your financial stability using the equity in your home. Get the cash you need now to pay off high interest credit cards and lower monthly payments by calling the trusted professionals at Worldwide Capital Mortgage. By working with more than 100 lenders, we can offer what many others can't. For honest answers and real solutions, call Worldwide Capital Mortgage. You'll be glad you did. 35-30 is the score. Let's check out some of our scoring leaders from the first half. And for the Colonials, Chappelle doing a lot of damage, made a couple of threes, and really carried the load offensively with 10 points. 
Pittsburgh again very balanced. A lot of different players scoring for them. Gray and Cook each had eight. Cook of course the newcomer to this lineup after sitting out last year. A transfer from East Carolina. Kendall with five rebounds. Played some center in the first half in the absence of Aaron Gray. They'll go with their original starting lineup of Kendall, Gray, Fields, Graves, and Cook. And the Colonials will answer with Jackson, Harris, Coleman, Chappelle, and Lee. And keep your eye on number 13 because he's playing with three first half fouls. You know, the good thing about the first half with him is he only played 12 minutes instead of his usual 19. Well, it'll be interesting to be inside the pit locker room at halftime. Because they saw a 12 point lead really dwindle away in the final four minutes of that half. Well, I'm sure they wish that never happened. There's a rebound to Gray off the miss by Coleman. Penetration left hand scoop is good. Well done by Antonio Graves. That's his first field goal, and it was a beauty. Yes, it was. And you've got two guys in this ball game, one on each team, that should, a should average 10 or more shots per half. Jackson's got to get his. He's got to make them. He misses that three-pointer, and the foul underneath is going to go against number four. I think it's going to be on Freddie Harris. That is his second, and it was a foul problem in the first half for the Colonials. They might have been even closer if they hadn't gotten into that early foul trouble. Yes, sir. They definitely might have been, and uh, they're going to have to be real careful. I'm surprised they didn't play a little zone the first half. And they may have to play some this half. The only problem is you give up so many offensive rebounds when you go zone. Gray, left hand miss. Knocked away, but into the hands of Chappelle. Looks to Coleman as Ted goes inside, and he gets loose and lays it home. Nice quick move to the basket. If he Aram with his first basket of the game. He wasn't iffy on that one. No, he was not. And there's a good steal by Coleman. Good team defense. The hands of Lee, who still got it. Now Coleman launches for three and rims out. Yeah, those are the ones you gotta have if you're Robert Morris. Levance Fields looks to Kendall, pulls up, reverses to Graves, thought about it, still thinking about it. <laughs> Passes on the shot. <laughs> and away from the ball, we've got a foul inside, and that'll go on number 11. That'll be the first on Aram. Nice quick move to the basket, and that's the way you're supposed to finish finish it off. Kendall with two fouls decided not to challenge the shot. Kendall for a layup, missed him. He was wide open too. Fields won't go. Gray, the offensive rebound, and it's blocked from behind, but tipped out and controlled by Pitt. Into the hands of Graves. Kendall, that's a two. And Kendall gets it back. Here he comes down the lane. Cook. Baseline penetration. Outside for three. That one bending, bending off. The rebound to Jackson. Here comes Coleman. This is Lee. This gets Cook. And Cook knocks it out of bounds. I'll tell you what, he's he's awfully tough to defend. I mean, you, you gotta figure a lot of times three men are trying to cover that little guy, and uh, he's awfully, awfully difficult to defend. And watch this quick move by him and he's hesitation and in the blow by. to live action. Colonials have it. 20 on the shot clock. Coleman picked up by Fields. This is Lee. Gray jumps out to help out. And a bad pass. But they threw it away. Not sure who the intended target was, but it was too hard. Yes, it was. Um, they did a nice job, you know, reading the screen and reversing back against it, but you got to make something happen. See Pitt, one of 11. And that's a team that's shooting 47 percent three pointers on the year. But that shot has not been there for them so far. But the thing about it is, when one item isn't working, something else probably is. Well, that's true. And uh, when you've got Gray on your team, there's probably no need to be shooting three. Kendall with an air ball. Sort of wondering why he's taking those two point shots from 18 feet. Right. He's in just inside the line. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. Might as well make it a three if you're going to shoot from out there. Well, of course, he shouldn't probably be shooting from out there. Good drive and penetration that time. 
by Aram. And he'll pick up his second field goal and draws the foul. The foul is on Aaron Gray to be his second. And Pittsburgh just one of seven. And the lead is only three. Now, I don't remember which game it was, but I remember one of the assistant coaches from Pitt saying they were playing early in the year. Maybe it was Oakland. I think it was Oakland. Coach Dixon said we're going inside. They went inside five times in a row and scored five times in a row with Gray. It almost looks like that's what they need to do now. You might be right. We'll see. Aram at the line hits the three point play. And the big edge in the second half, obviously, to Robert Morris as the Panthers are just one for seven. And they have sliced the lead to two. It was five at halftime, grew to seven, and now it's down to two. Both teams keep sticking with the man to man. Gray's baseline shot buried him. He's in double figures with 10. Boy, you can't give him that look. No, you can't. He makes those shots. Those are tough. No, people don't realize how difficult a shot that is. Over Gray for the basket. If the Aram has seven. And that's once again, if you're going to beat Gray, you've got to beat him with quickness. You're not going to beat him with size. Here's Ramon with the basketball. He had one three-pointer in the first half, the only one that Pitt has in the ballgame. Kendall from outside, who played just over four minutes. Cook penetrates, but he lost the ball. Scramble and a held ball. Possession arrow is going to keep it at this end. The Panthers will keep it as we head to the benches with 15-53 remaining in the game. And Pitt's lead is only two. It's 39-37, the third-ranked Panthers in front. If you want to make your hard-earned dollar go a whole lot farther, get ready. Advance Auto Parts has the low prices guaranteed to save you money. Get ready to get the best price possible on all the parts and accessories you need with our ready-to-go low price guarantee. Nobody can beat our prices on just about anything for your car. So when you want to get more for your money while getting more out of your car, get to Advance Auto Parts for our everyday ready-to-go low price guarantee. Ready Experience is an excellent teacher. And what over 45 years of experience has taught Oppenheimer Funds is the strength of a balanced approach and the effectiveness of a diversely skilled team. Valuable lessons that guide us through an ever-changing financial landscape. Oppenheimer Funds, the right way to invest. Carefully consider fund investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses. Call your advisor for a prospectus with this and other fund information. Read it carefully before investing. I've been putting off dealing with the IRS, and now they've levied 90% of my wages. And froze my bank account. We tried dealing with the IRS ourselves. Big mistake. Our business has payroll tax problems. Now the IRS is threatening to take our home. We don't want to file bankruptcy. I hired a company who promised a fast pennies on the dollar compromise. And they did nothing, right? The IRS is ruining our marriage. Isn't there a company out there we can trust? Yes, there is. Nationwide Tax Relief. If you or someone you care about is suffering with tax problems, call the attorneys at Nationwide for a free confidential consultation. Nationwide got the IRS to reduce my $134,000 tax debt to $1,500. I'm so grateful. If you owe the IRS more than $10,000, call us. We're honest and we'll treat you like family. I only wish I'd called Nationwide years ago. Call 1-800-455-2992 for your free confidential consultation. Call 1-800-455-2992 now. It's 39-37 and the Colonials right now, Mike, holding their own inside as well. Well, you can see their confidence soaring. That happened as a result of the first half. Also, in this half, what they've decided to do is use their quickness, as you see, Ify going against Gray on the quick move. Also, you see him getting up quick off his feet to get that ball, and once again, here, beating him off the dribble. If You know, you can't beat Gray size for size. you got to beat him with quickness. He has all seven of the Colonials' points, and now a chance for Robert Morris to tie, and the last time they were tied was about five minutes gone in the game. There were three early ties in the game. Coleman with it. And a foul. A little bit too aggressive on the hedge, and obviously in the bench score in there, you see Robert Morris right now with the edge, which is not supposed to happen. It's well, early on it was the opposite. The Panthers were outscoring the Colonials seven to nothing off the bench early going, but uh, that has changed. And credit number eleven with part of that. Yes, he's done a great job. Sanat also doing a job off the bench. 
Langhurst had that three pointer as he played for Coleman who got an early foul trouble. This is Jackson. Been a little quieter. Six points for him in the first half. Now backing away is Lee. Shot clock at 10. I am very impressed with Robert Morris's patience in the half court execution. They execute very well within the half court. Missed that opportunity. Here's Gray. Goes back to Fields. Now Ramon. Five minutes gone in the second half. This is Cook. Spins. Kicks it to Ramon. Lines up a three. Rims out. And the rebound to Robert Morris. Brought away by Aram. If well, the has played well in the second he's half. He's played pretty well. My question right now is why Pittsburgh is shooting all these threes and not going inside to Gray. And the Panthers are two for ten in the second half. Too many threes. There's a three-pointer. That's going to be an air ball into the hands of Gray. So a long-range miss by Chappelle, who had a couple of threes in the first half. Fields with it. This is where you go inside to your big guy. Get it into Mr. Gray. Cook. No place to go. Skips it out the field. Ramon looks get, for help. Get it into the big guy. And guess what? This that's a dozen for Aaron Gray. It took him a while to get him the ball, but when they did, he had room. Well, you got to get him the ball. He gets so deep and he hardly misses. He's shooting almost 70%. Get him the ball. Coleman picked up by Fields off the Jackson screen. Line drive three, and he buries it. That's the first basket of the game for Coleman. He's 11 of 25 shooting three pointers. Yeah, but he's rested tonight. See, those, those fouls in the first half may actually come back to help Robert Morris. Now, that's the 152nd three pointer of his career, and he's got an outside chance of setting a new school record. The three pointer makes it a one point ball game. Well, the Panthers are really being challenged by the team from Moon Township. Right now it's Pitt 41 and Robert Morris 40. We're challenging Honda and Toyota head on at the Hyundai Challenge Year in Sales Event. Only Hyundai has a lineup that gives you better fuel efficiency, a better warranty, and better year end savings on models like the award winning Sonata. And right now you can lease a 2007 Sonata for just $199 a month. That's just $199 a month for the stylish Hyundai Sonata. We're up to the challenge. You have to hurry. During the Hyundai Challenge, Lisa Sonata for just $1.99 a month. Hurry, offer in soon. This is Jim Calhoun. He's a cancer survivor. This is Jim Behan. He survived cancer too. This is Tubby Smith. His sister is battling cancer. They're part of Coaches vs. Cancer, a program where coaches and fans join together in the fight against cancer. This is the American Cancer Society and the National Association of Basketball Coaches. This is how you can make a difference. To support Coaches vs. Cancer in your area, call or visit us online. Do you love spending hours working out at the gym? If you do, the Total Gym is not for you. But if you want one of the fastest, most effective workouts ever, then the Total Gym is for you. For our 10th anniversary, we have an incredible deal. You can try the Total Gym in your home for an entire month, risk-free. We'll ship you a Total Gym at our expense if you don't see a remarkable change, just send it back and we'll return every penny you were charged. But if you're like most of us, once you try it, you'll never want to be without it again. Just one year on the Total Gym and I've lost 45 pounds. So take our risk-free challenge and get the body you've always wanted. Why go to the gym when you can own one? Call the number on your screen for our anniversary special. Try the Total Gym in your home risk-free for 60 days. We'll pay shipping and handling. Call now. It is 41 to 40. The Panthers are 1 for 13 shooting three-pointers in this game tonight. Robert Morris has made five, so now they go to their big man inside. Well, Pitt's got to go to Gray. Of course, he's not in the game right now. Kendall is. But the deal is, is that the last time that Pitt played against Florida State, they lit it up from three. So maybe they think they're a three-point shooting team now. You, you know, you got to go with your strength on every given night. Well, they were a good three-point shooting team coming in at 47 percent. Excellent. But Robert Morris has made five three-pointers. Certainly they have 
put themselves right in the thick of this basketball game challenging the third ranked team in the nation. This is Graves with it to Ramon inside Kendall who's playing the pivot right now. Ramon almost lost it. Shot clock at 10. Biggs. And a bump from behind. That's going to be on Jackson. That wasn't much of a bump, was it? But that's three fouls on Jackson. That wasn't, I didn't see a bump at all, to be honest with you. I mean, you don't call that. Just the third team foul for Robert Morris, and they come away with a loose ball. Heading back the other way is Coleman. He played well in the second half. Coleman all the way and off the glass, and good. And that gives the lead to Robert Morris. The first time they have been ahead in this ball game. It's 42 41. As crazy as, as this sounds, this might be really good for Pitt. Now let's see. Well, when they played Oakland in the part of the tournament that they hosted here, the Colonial Athletic Association tournament, good drive and a putting it away is Tyrell Biggs, his first basket, and he puts the Panthers back on top. Tyrell Biggs is playing big, and you know he's playing so much better than he ever did because he's those 30 pounds he took off. He's a lot quicker. The Oakland Zoo comes to life. Jackson tried to go inside, tried to feed Tony Lee, but he threw it away. So Pitt will get it back, leading by a point. Almost eight minutes gone in the second half. And they've gotten the crowd into the game, really, Mike, for the first time tonight. Well, the crowd has sensed, uh, you know, a point in the game where they better get involved and get their guys going. I think they were sitting back, sort of relaxed, figuring this was an easy game. There yeah. is no such thing. Panthers, with about four minutes left in the first half, had a 12-point lead. Ramon for three, bending off. Kendall he is fouled inside, and that foul is going to go on Aram. That will be his second. So if Aram picks up the foul, it's the Panthers by one. If you want to make your hard-earned dollar go a whole lot farther, get ready. Advance Auto Parts has the low prices guaranteed to save you money. Get ready to get the best price possible on all the parts and accessories you need with our ready-to-go low price guarantee. Nobody can beat our prices on just about anything for your car. So when you want to get more for your money while getting more out of your car, get to Advance Auto Parts for our everyday ready-to-go low price guarantee. Ready and on the web at sectorspdrs.com or call 1-800-THE-AMEX now. America runs on Duncan's Pound of Coffee. Available in five delicious flavors like French vanilla and hazelnut, they're the perfect way to turn a holiday get-together into a celebration. America runs on Duncan. Ah, yes. It's that time of year again. A time to spread goodwill and cheer among your fellow man. But this holiday season, take a break from the usual mirth and merriment with the New York Lottery Holiday Instant Games, Peppermint Twist, Polar Pairs, and Surprise Package, which could be worth up to $750,000. Hey, you never know. America runs on Dunkin' Lattes. No complicated ordering procedures. Just the rich, delicious taste of espresso and steamed milk. They're the lattes for the rest of us. America runs on Duncan. The lead is one for Pittsburgh and some good three-point shooting by the Colonials is certainly keeping them very much in it. As a matter of fact, gave them the brief lead. Coleman playing well in the second half. Let's check out our select stats brought to you by Select Sector Spiders. One for 14 for Pitt. That's not getting the job done from outside. No, it's time to put the three-point shot away and just go inside to Gray. And Gray has it, backs his way in, and they'll shoot a three. This one's no good. The rebound was handled and lost and then tipped out of bounds. Benjamin had the rebound but could not hang on. So once again, the Colonials with a chance to take the lead. 
It's now 7% from three point. That's <laughs> not good. Whatever the percentage, it's not good. That little push at the end of the half did a lot. Coleman for three. That's in and out. Tipped up and into the hands of Ronald Ramon. They're playing with more confidence than we saw in the first 15 minutes of the first half. Once again, the longer the game goes and the longer they hang, the more confidence they will have. But that's the answer right there. It is. And you know what? You just keep going into him and going into him. And if he misses, then go for the weak side rebound. Lee backs away. Shot clock inside 20. Now Coleman. The dump down the overplay and the held ball. And that will keep it at this end of the court. And we expected the size advantage to be an advantage, but you can see not a big advantage inside. Not at all. F uh, plus five is not, you know, it's just not as much as you would expect it to be. You would figure plus ten or more. And not that much difference in points in the paint either. No. Well, obviously, when you're shooting as many threes as Pitt is tonight, true. you're not going to get a lot of points in the paint. But you got to give Robert Morris credit for that, too. They're doing a real good job containing. They're doing a good job really clogging up the lane. Shot clock is at 10, and they had a little unofficial 15-second timeout there with their head coach, Mark Schmidt, in his sixth year. Doing a good job with the Colonial. This is Coleman. Jackson for three. Just did beat the buzzer and a fresh clock for the Colonials. Robert Morris gets the offensive board and they get their hands on the ball again. Showing real good patience in the half court, using some clock, making Pittsburgh play some defense. Coleman inside with a miss. And then a foul on the rebound, and the foul goes on Aram. That'll be three on him. The sophomore from Toronto, Ontario, Canada, has had a strong second half he really has in fact uh, this game is going to help Robert Morris a lot because they know they can they can really count on this guy they'll be playing Duquesne at home on Saturday all alone is Gray 16 for Aaron back to that five point lead the advantage they had at halftime here we go another one of those critical junctures Coleman. He'll reset as the shot clock winds to 10. Coleman on the drive, gives it up. Inside, muscling the ball up and in is Lee. His first basket in the second half. And again, it's a three-point game. That was a big basket. Right it was there. a huge basket. Also looked like it probably should have been a three-point play and going to the foul line. Looked like he got fouled on that as well. Ramon being handed out in front by Chappelle. Finds Kendall. They look inside. There's Aaron Gray. Great pass. Ramon to Fields. He penetrates and then kicks back for Ramon's three. Good. You know, it's amazing what that extra pass will do. And you notice that time, Ramon penetrates, kicks to Fields, who's not a shooter, but then Fields penetrates and kicks to Ramon, who is. Inside penetration and a rebound to Aaron Gray, the big man for Pittsburgh. Hit, you wait for the big guy now. You just got your big rebound, a big basket, and go back inside to him again. And I'm sure that's exactly what Jamie's going to do. And Jamie is really emphatic along that sideline. You know, you don't win 80% of your games as a coach without being pretty smart. Graves is fouled on his way in. A double double for Aaron Gray already. And the foul goes on Chappelle. He'll pick up his second. Gray with 16 points, and he has 10 rebounds. Well, there aren't going to be too many nights this year where he doesn't have a double-double. I mean, he's just that hes that big, and he's that good. And uh, big guys with big with good hands, okay, end up, you know, basically making plays at both ends of the court. Well, he's right at his average. He's averaging 16.2 points a game and 9.7 rebounds. He's got 16 points, 10 rebounds, and we've still got eight and a half minutes to go. Just imagine if he was, you know, touching the ball just a, a little, little more. Bit more. Yeah, you're right. And sometimes the coach has to go, fellas, yes. <laughs> here. Yeah, He's you know, in there. Me, yeah, let me introduce you to him, you know. <laughs> but you know what, though? These guys know, and, and, and you've, you've noticed the last couple minutes, they, they've, gone, they've gone to him. 
Inbound to Graves. That time Aaron Gray came out and tried to set a pick. Nothing doing. Ramon handled. This is Biggs. He's played a lot tonight. Here's Graves. The dump down inside. How about that? Somehow Whoa. it went. That is unbelievable. The foul is on Jackson. I've got four on him. And yeah. somehow the ball went in the basket. Well, watch this play. It looks like a foul on Gray, though, on the back end. See that? But a great play, nevertheless. But you know, when you're an All-American, potential lottery pick, you get those calls. Well, he's so big. He he's really so is. strong. He really is. And I'm sure a lot of times referees are probably thinking guys are flopping in there. Completes the old fashioned three point play and Aaron Gray now has 19 points. All of a sudden the Panthers lead grows to eight. That's the biggest lead they've had in the second half. After falling behind by a point. It's almost like it was a wake up call. Mike. Yes it was and now you got a little about eight minutes to go. Aaron goes to the bench. Let's see what happens during these next two minutes. That's going to determine, I think, the game. It is a 12-2 Panther run. Coleman, no place to go. Now he puts up a three, and I banks it home. I don't think he called that. Do I you? don't know. <laughs> you know what? I think they're going to count it anyway. Amen. It's still three. <laughs> it's his second three-pointer. He's got eight points in the second half. Aram has seven points in the second half and they are those two have combined to take over the offensive scoring for the Colonials. Well they have. This is Fields. And that's going to be a foul on Chappelle number three. You know when the legs go you start to use the hands and that's why I got that foul. Well as we take you to break it is Aaron Gray who has led this charge to the Panthers and has boosted them back on top here at home. Opportunity doesn't knock. Opportunity waits. Waits for people with the knowledge, experience, and talent to locate it. At Oppenheimer Funds, our investment teams have been creating value by finding hidden investment opportunities for over 45 years. Oppenheimer Funds, the right way to invest. Carefully consider fund investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses. Call your advisor for a prospectus with this and other fund information. Read it carefully before investing. Enjoying Guinness Draft in a sports bar is a great idea. Yes, and I've taken the liberty of ordering us some hot wings. Hot wings? Brilliant! <laughs> that wasn't too bad. Please enjoy Guinness Draft. Selling your car, truck, or motorcycle can be a nightmare. Ah! But with Big Bucks Auto, it's easy. Call 888-44-BUCKS. Go to BigBucksAuto.com. Drive in for your free cash appraisal, and we'll buy your car within 20 minutes. Even if it's leased or financed. We do all the paperwork. It's simple. No costly ads or psychos coming to your home. No bait and switch trade-ins. And not knowing what you're really getting for your car. Don't sell or trade your vehicle until you call Big Bucks Auto. 888-44-BUCKS. Hello. ESPN Monday Night Football. Mondays, 8.30 Eastern. ESPN, serving sports fans around the world. Brought to you by Toyota and all the brilliant new models available at your local Toyota dealer. Toyota, a smart way to keep moving forward. Well, the mascots are going at it tonight. So are these two teams. The Colonials have presented themselves very well. I can understand why they're one of the favorites in the Northeast Conference. But uh, again, for Pittsburgh, when you get in trouble, you go to number 33. Yes, you do. And uh, Robert Morris, uh, this game is going to help them tremendously later in the year when they're playing a tough game in their conference. They're going to remember this game tonight when they're going to think that they can beat anybody. In the world. Fields will go to the free throw line for the first time. He's been a good foul shooter so far this year. He's made eight out of nine. It's been almost five and a half minutes 
since the Colonials took their brief lead. Pittsburgh shot 50% in the first half, and they're still shooting around that 50% mark as Levance makes two. And he's 9 of 10 at the free throw line, which is a good number to have for your point guard. It's a great number to have because those are the guys that use you on the foul line at the end of the game. This is Lee. Guarded by Cook. Good patience by Robert Morris. Real important possession here for them. It's a 55-47 lead, and the shot clock at 10. Here's your player. It's a not baseline. Now Lee gets inside, puts Ooh, it up great, and in. Great move. Once again, that undersized three man, strong, real strong. And he gets his 10th point of the night. Aaron Gray is poised to come back into the lineup for the Panthers, who lead by six, 650 to go in the game. It was a five-point halftime difference. Biggest lead was a dozen for Pitt in the first half. Robert Morris has led just once tonight. You know what? I am I'm really impressed with the, how solid they are on defense. And, you know, even though Pittsburgh scored that time, they did it with a jump shot from about 16, 17 feet. Well, we saw this in the first half, a huge differential in fouls. Eight in the second half on Robert Morris, just two on Pitt. Well, part of that is the fact that just because of the depth and the size factor. That's a three, and it's partially blocked, I think, and goes out of bounds. They're saying it was not touched. So it will be pit ball as Gray will check back in for the Panthers. Biggs will go to the bench. Pitt leads at 57-49, and they'll have the ball with 6.13 to go. I thought the, ball, the shot was deflected. Well, so. unless, unless I, you know, I'm going to have to take my glasses off. I think it was <laughs> deflected. <laughs> and you got three guys out there uh, that one of them, I think, should have seen that. But you got to play. That's right. Play they, say, they say the ball doesn't lie, so let's see what happens here. Usually that means that Pittsburgh is supposed to miss something here. We'll see. This is Cook. Kendall works the baseline, lays it up and in, and we'll go to the foul line. Well, the ball lied that time. Because usually after a bad call, something happens good for the other team. Now Kendall with a good drive, and they didn't close down on him, so he just went ahead and went to the basket, laid it in, nice, goes to the line. Uh, nice move by the big guy, and obviously no defensive weak side help from Robert Morris. Put those two together, and you got a basket plus a foul, and probably a three-point play. It's back to a ten-point difference now. Another 80 percent free throw shooter. He's two of three tonight. Kendall has eight points. The redshirt senior from Canada, 60-59. The Panthers lead it by 11. After Robert Morris, do you really believe you can win the game? If so, you you make some baskets now. The blocking foul is called on Kendall, and he'll pick up number three as we check some other scores. UConn, no problem for the 15th-ranked Huskies. Georgetown is trailing Oregon in the second half. LSU over McNeese State. Memphis coming back against Arkansas State. And Nevada is losing at that point in the ballgame. Butler over Valpo. Wichita State has come back on UMKC. It is a team that should be in the top five in the country. The way that they play this year and all the teams that they beat. But once again, you know, they don't get that respect factor. And I got a team for you that's asleep for everybody to keep an eye on. That's an offensive foul. And what team is that? And that team is, I was wondering if you're going to ask, Texas <laughs> A&M. Okay. Keep an eye on those guys. Remember, you, you heard it here first at the Pitt and Robert Morris game. Mike Jarvis on uh, November the 29th said, look out for the Aggies. Look out for the Aggies on <laughs> Final Four team. Okay. I like that. Okay. What about Pitt? They have Final I Four think potential? They are. I really think they are. I think this, is, uh, this could be the best chance they've had to go that far in a long, long time. They've got all the pieces. They have not been able to get past the round of 16. That's a three, and it's too strong, and Gray is there for the rebound. So I think this year they will. That's another prediction. So we got two of your we final got two. four <laughs> already. <laughs> Why play the rest of the season? <laughs> Cook was out of bounds. Well, the Panthers will turn it over. Checking back in once again is Ify Imram. Imram back in the lineup. He played well at the start. An update on our star watch. We'll see how our stars are doing. Cook has 10. Chappelle has 10. Not bad. They, they both played well. Guys uh, that you know aren't the 
top scorers on the teams. But Chappelle has not scored in the second half. No, he has not. Nice duck in. And a block by Gray. Couldn't get to that one, but he gets to the rebound. Oh, what a force he is inside. He's just so big, and you know, he's, he's also a guy that's smart enough to stay on his feet most of the time. And he's made only two fouls tonight. That is his 13th rebound. Kendall comes out, hands to Graves. Now Cook. That's where they're so tough, right in here. And he gets the roll. 21 for Aaron Gray. His season high is 24. His career high is 25. And you know, there's a lot of ways to get assists. Everybody thinks you just get assists with passes. A lot of times you get assists with screens, and that's what Pittsburgh does very well. They get assists passing, and they get assists screening. Foul goes on Cook. He's got three. Well, the Colonials took that brief lead, and as we said at the time, that was almost like a wake-up call for the Panthers. They have played much better. As Benjamin checks in, and Graves checks out. The only danger when you're playing, when you do that against like Oakland, and you do that against Robert Morris, teams that you're definitely that much more better better than physically, you have a tendency to think you can do that anytime, and you really can't. There's a block by Gray. Didn't leave his feet, did he? No, he didn't have to. No. But how many big guys are smart enough to, to know that and to do that? Well, the Colonials, since they had that brief lead, have made only three baskets. And we're talking about an eight-minute stretch, so they've made only three. Guess what? Go inside, guys. Ramon has it. The ball into your big horse. Aaron Gray back to Ramon. Benjamin for three. Rims out. See, the reason why you can go inside to Gray almost every time down court is because he's so unselfish and he'll kick it out. That's the third three-pointer of the second half for Coleman, and he's got all 11 of his points in the second half and almost single-handedly keeping his team in it. And part of that is because he only played 12 minutes and he's got the fresh legs. Well, we talked a little bit about it earlier. Ben Howland was the coach that really helped turn this program around while he was here. And then he turned it over to the guy that had been his assistant for a long period of time, Jamie Dixon, and he's just kept it going. Well, Jamie Dixon had also, a lot of people don't realize this, he had also worked for Ben Holland at, at Northern Arizona. So he obviously was more than familiar. And Jamie Dixon started as a junior college coach in the West Coast and has really paid his dues over the years. Well, they both have their teams in the lofty rankings. How about that? How about the phone call between those two guys the other day <laughs> yeah. telling each other they should be number one? Of course, both of them, I don't know if they really believe it. But. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, you don't worry about who's number one in November. No, I don't you think. don't. No, you don't. I mean, it's it's a nice thing to have, and it, it gives the fans something to talk about, and sure. the media, of course, but March is when you pay off the big money. Nice pass. Took hanging in the air long enough, didn't get the basket, but did draw the foul, so he will go to the line. Now, how many guys would have given that up? Big guys. How many guys would have given it up? He gave well, it I up. know one. That's right. <laughs> we just saw it. It is the Pitt Panthers by 10. It only happens once a year. The Hyundai Challenge year-end sales event. Up to two grand cash back. Your best opportunity to save more than ever on more models than ever. All with America's best warranty. Like the fuel-efficient Tucson. Ranked highest in initial quality by J.D. Power & Associates. Take the Hyundai Challenge. Take up to $2,000 cash back. But don't take your time. Offer ends November 30th. Lease a new Hyundai Tucson for just $2.29 a month at your local Hyundai dealer. I'm Bob Costas, and I've been broadcasting sports for a long time. Much of what I do is ad-libbed, but still, one of the most important aspects of my job is being able to write. Narrations, essays, commentaries, it's essential to express those thoughts and concepts clearly and concisely. Good writing is essential for almost any career. And with today's advanced technology, the National Commission on Writing reports that the need to write well has never been more important. Writing is everybody's business. In. The best coach I ever had was my dad. Practice. 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 He taught me that the fundamentals, together with hard work, make anything possible.
And now it's time to teach others what my dad taught me. Introducing Steve Nash's MVP Basketball, the only DVD program that makes back-to-back -back MVP Steve Nash your personal coach. You'll learn Steve's fundamental training secrets to give you a competitive edge on the court. I don't think there's anybody in the NBA that does it any better than Steve Nash. What an opportunity to have Steve Nash as your child's personal coach. This program is about the fundamentals of basketball, and Steve Nash knows the fundamentals of basketball. Order two-time MVP Steve Nash's MVP basketball program for the low introductory price of only $29.95. Act now and you'll receive a second DVD, Steve's team play and practice organization. Perfect for the parent coach, absolutely free. But it's not available in stores, so you must act now. Tonight's Big East game has been brought to you by Select Sector Spiders. Start weaving a stronger portfolio today. Visit us on the web at SpectreSPDRS.com or call 1-800-DMX. And they do love Aaron Gray, and with good reason. He's had quite a night, 21 points. He's got another double-double, and uh, he really has lifted this pit team in the second half with his inside play. But at the beginning of the second half, they didn't go inside. They were shooting three-pointers. Well, they got smart quick. Cook at the foul line now is four of eight. Back into the lineup is Chappelle. Heading to the bench is Uigwe. One of two for the transfer. 11 points for Cook. His season high is 17. He had a 24 point game when he was playing for East Carolina. Jackson's three won't go. Another rebound corralled by Aaron Gray. Now I know it's an 11 point game, but you know what? There's a couple of different ways you can get three point shots. You still want to be trying to drive that ball to the basket. And Jackson right now might think about wanting to drive a few of the baskets by just launching up the three. Panthers are going to take some clock. They've been doing that since they got the lead back. They're up by 11 right now. Biggest lead has been 13 here in the second half. Fields pulls up and nestles it in the net. Well, I'll tell you, when, you, when you're that strong, you know, for a little guy and you can get in the lane and shoot like him, boy, it makes you awful tough. Back to that 13-point edge. Reach-in foul on Ronald Ramon. And that'll be number two on Ronald, the junior from the Bronx. You've got guys from the Bronx, Brooklyn. But as you said, that's changing a little bit. It is, it is. Who's the guy that used to be here that's now in Manhattan? Uh, this is Barry, Barry Ross. Ross. See how quickly we forget <laughs> Barry. Know. You don't forget Barry. He did a great Barry job. Barry did a great job. And he had that New York pipeline. I don't know what he said to those guys, but they certainly liked it. And I noticed, like I said earlier, there's no guys yet from New York City, which well, is kind of strange. Does that mean he's going to rechannel that pipeline to Manhattan? Well, he's certainly going to try, but it's a lot different getting guys to go uh, to Manhattan than it is to come down here to Pitt. Well, the other thing, too, is when you have some success, yes. and that word gets around, the Bronx and Brooklyn, uh, you've yeah. got guys you played with on the playground, so you know what's going on. What a touch there. Nice touch. By Kendall. He's got 10 points. So it kind of feeds on itself, doesn't well, it? Well, it really does. And, you know, guys, uh, basically, they talk to one another, and when one guy comes home and says, I love it, the next guy's a lot easier for him to go. There's a little something about the mystique of playing in the Big East, too, don't you think? Oh, there's no doubt about it. I mean, the Big East is still one of the premier, if not the best conferences in the country. So who doesn't want to play in, against the best every night? And you're going to do that in the Big East. Well, the Panthers have scored 26 points in the last eight minutes. They have really turned it up. Well, I'll tell you what else. Robert Morris is really tired. That depth, that, you know, those nine guys just way you down. Fields from the foul line, bending short. Ramon has the carom and a fresh clock. We're in the final minute. It's about Panthers. legs right now. It's about legs. And you notice Pitts getting to all the loose balls right now. Panthers are going to go to 7-0. and oh. Yes, they will. And for the Panthers, it'll be the fifth straight year that they have opened up 7-0. and Last year they started 15-0. and Racing in to lay it home but missed the shot. Coleman with a follow. It won't go either. The foul is going to be on Ronald Ramon. That's his number three on him. We have 33 and a half seconds remaining. 
it up by 15, their biggest lead. And that's a good point about the fact that you're trying to play nine guys with maybe six. That's right. And if you look at the guys before the game even began, when there was the national anthem was being played, you could see the difference physically in the two teams. But Robert Morris and Coach Schmidt have done a great job tonight. They kept these fans here just about the whole night. And that, a lot of people thought they'd be home early, you know, a lot earlier than this. Well, the shocker was the last four minutes of the first half when they outscored Pitt 12 to 5 to cut that 12 point lead to a five point edge at intermission. Aaron yeah. Gray goes to the bench and gets a well deserved hand and a nice pat on the back from his coach. 21 points for him, 15 rebounds. That's a pretty good night for it. That's a good night work for anybody. It might be a good week for a lot of players. <laughs> well, it's a good career for some, <laughs> trust me. That's true. Goldman hits the second. He has a dozen all in the second half. Well, if you're Robert Morris right now, what you want to do is you want to score, you want to make this a 4-0 game and you want to close it out. If you can lose by 10 or less against Pitt in their gym, it's like it's like a victory for these guys. So certainly compared to some of the blowouts they've been involved in in the past, and the intimidation factor coming in here against the number three team in the country. There, there's a factor there. There really is. And as I mentioned earlier, these guys play against each other in the summer. So just today I could notice from Pitt that they respected these guys. And you know what? It was well founded. Final seconds ticking away. Just let it go, guys. And the Panthers will walk away with win number seven in a row. And Robert Morris will go away with their pride intact. Well, on the downside, as far as the Colonials are concerned, uh, usually if they hold the other team under 70, they win those games. Didn't happen here tonight. Well, the Pitt Panthers were able to do the job behind the play inside of Aaron Gray, a 21.15 rebound night. The Panthers handle the Colonials. They are 7 and 0. We're not finished. Stay with us. We'll be back. Golf Digest is going to cure your slice now and for free. And that's a guarantee. Introducing the breakthrough video, Cure Your Slice Now, and it's free with your paid subscription to Golf Digest magazine. In this video, top PGA instructor Chuck Cook shows you the seven key phases of the swing and gives you his proven method for better control and longer, straighter drives. And here's our guarantee. If Golf Digest and Cure Your Slice Now doesn't cure your slice and improve your game, cancel and keep the video free. Golf Digest is your source for golf. Every month in Golf Digest, you get easy-to-follow tips and instruction from the best teachers and players in golf. Information on the top equipment, the best places to play, thought-provoking commentary. You also get this removable Pocket Tips booklet. Call now. Use your credit card and get your first risk-free issue, Pocket Tips booklet, and video free. You get 11 more issues for only $19.77. If your game doesn't improve, cancel and keep the video, booklet, and magazine free. So call 800-543-6200. That's 800-543-6200. Call now. We are back at the okay, Peterson there. Event Center. 67-53 is the final score, but it was not an easy night for Jamie Dixon and the Panthers as they were tested. Uh, a little run by the Colonials, Jamie, right at the end of the first half. Yeah. They cut that lead down to five, and that seemed to give them a little momentum. Yeah, it sure did, and we really wanted to finish out the half. We took actually good shots, didn't make some of them, and uh, uh, it was a 12-point lead. They got the momentum going, and, and they're dangerous because they shoot the three and they make some tough shots. So. You know, it's kind of what I thought it was going to be. I didn't think it was going to be easy. They keep battling. I've seen them play against Marshall. They were down 12. They battled back and won the game. So not surprised at all. I mean, uh, uh, you know, we just didn't make open shots. That was really the thing. But we did other things well. I thought our offense was good. We were 2 of 17 from 3. I mean, you don't win many games going 2 of 17 from 3. And wide open looks, too. Well, let me ask you this question. I know, you know, you mentioned earlier the respect that you had for them. Yeah. Do you think the players had the same respect that you did, James? I think so. This team is really uh, uh, focused on and, and, and know what what to expect. We've talked about how we're playing the uh, a lot of the teams that aren't BCS teams, they're all conference champions or predicted to be the conference champions. So they know all of them are good. And I think we were ready. I mean, I thought we played pretty good. Mm -hmm. uh, we turned it over nine times. We just didn't make open threes. I mean, and that's what they were doing. They forced you to, and we got great shots. I didn't think we took one bad three mm -hmm. all night. So two for 17 with as well as we've been shooting the ball is uh, doesn't figure, doesn't make sense. But, uh, you know, we, we did a defense. I mean, how about Aaron Gray? I mean, 15 rebounds. He got the one long rebound at the end of the game yes. and we went after it. I mean, that, that just shows how much better player he is even from last year. Well, you said earlier today that uh, you'd rather have quick 
than than bulk. And yeah. I think you know once again guys like him and guys like Biggs are truly paying off. Yeah, I mean they're they're in their better shape, they're better condition, and uh, they're just doing the job. And and we got a lot of things. I, I you know I should have gotten a Sam Young. I didn't play. I made a mistake on that one. I should have played him more minutes. I, I was thinking about that all the way through. He's going to be back and giving us a great effort in the next game. Um, but uh, you know I, I we did some mistakes on the uh, rotation wise. That, that was probably something that uh, just because the way the game was going, but. I thought we made some good decisions at the end and stuck with the defense. I thought our defense was pretty good all the way through. Jamie, thanks 37. very much. We're going to let you go and see your guys. And we'll, see Aaron you. Gray thanks. will thanks join us okay. when we come back. Week. Stay with us. It's a W. My husband and I are constantly on the go. What with work and shuttling the kids between ballet and soccer practice. Come on, kids. It's hard to find time to care for our lawn. It's easy to overlook your lawn when you lead a busy life. That's where Scott's Lawn Service can help. Hi, I'm Ashton Ritchie with the Scott's Company. Just because you don't have the time doesn't mean you can't have a great lawn. Just give Scott's Lawn Service a call. A Scott's specialist will inspect your lawn and design a program specifically suited to its needs. And we apply Scott's proven products to your lawn. With Scott's Lawn Service, you'll never again face lawn problems alone. And of course, Scott's Lawn Service is guaranteed. You don't sign any contract, and you can stop the service at any time. Give Scott's Lawn Service a call. Get the convenience of a lawn service and the confidence of knowing it's Scott's. For a free, no-obligation lawn analysis, call now, 800-238-1400. That's 800-238-1400. Working from home changed my life. It all started when I was referred by this free service. With all the money I made working from home, I bought a new home. This is the one website you have to visit. Put your computer to work now. All you need is a computer and a little belief in yourself. I'm making $5,000 a month. I make over $7,000 a month working part-time. I love the lifestyle my home business offers. And the money's great, too. Log on to 13career.com now. We are back at 67-53 is the final. Aaron Gray was the big man for the Panthers again tonight. 21 points and 15 rebounds. I'm joined uh, at courtside by Mike Jarvis. And Mike, I, I don't think I've ever heard a coach say, well, I should have played Sam Young more. I got my rotation messed up in the second half. That's why the players love him. I mean, he is a player. He's a, he's a player's coach. And I mean, that's the same way he is. If you watch him in practice, he's the same way. He's a teacher. He's a role model. He's a real, really great guy who can really coach. And he's got a good team that's very unselfish. They love each other. They like to play together. And they, they showed it again tonight. They do. It, I mean, and that's the key. I mean, there's a lot of teams that are talented, but they don't really get along the way these guys do. Well, they came back with one purpose in mind, and that's to go deep into March. They're off to another great start with a 7-0 record. And they'll be in action next week, a week from tonight, against Duquesne, as a matter of fact, the team that Robert Morris will be playing over the weekend. But again, the final here tonight, the Panthers in the second half put it away 67 to 53 for Mike Jarvis and our entire Big East crew here at the Peterson Event Center. I'm John Sanders. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed it. We hope you'll be back with us again next week. Until then, so long, everyone.